Hello everybody, welcome into Studio Politics, and on today's show we're going to talk about the controversial Super Bowl. Let's get into it. Now let me ask you a question. Now you've probably never had to think about this question because you're probably a normal person, but the question I have for you is, are the Chiefs racist? The first controversy surrounding the Super Bowl is the talk about whether or not the Chiefs mascot and their signature move, the Tomahawk Chop, is racist and dehumanizing to indigenous people. Now I know you guys might doubt that this is a real thing, but as we know, liberals don't actually think with reason and they don't just live life like a normal person. They have to find something to complain about and the chief's mascot is the next thing for them. The first example I'm going to use for this ridiculous outrage is a professor and he's also a racial equity educator and he's also an author that has written multiple books such as The Language Warriors Manifesto, The Indian Wars, and Everything You Wanted to Know About Indians But Were Too Afraid to Ask. His name is Anton Truer. He took the liberty of posting on social media before the Super Bowl. Let's go ahead and take a look at what he said. Quote, As a nation tunes into our national pastime today, remember that all Americans are swallowing a spoonful of racism in order to watch football. Even though the racism is directed at Native Americans today as legions of Chiefs fans play Indian and do tomahawk chops, the racism dehumanizes all of us regardless of our racial and cultural backgrounds. This particular statement is outlandish for multiple reasons, but the first one is that he says, All Americans. And so you, yes, who you thought you were just checking into a football game or maybe hanging out with some friends, having some drinks, or maybe you're a real big Chiefs fan, real big Eagles fan, and you're watching the game, and yet you swallowed a spoonful of racism in order to watch that game. Now, you might have never had a racial thought during the game because, again, you're a normal person, but if we listen to Anton, he wants you to know that you swallowed a spoonful of racism. What's funny about this is that the Chiefs mascot actually gives representation to Native American and Indigenous people, um, in my opinion. Um, it makes them appear as you know noble warriors, and they have a really cool spearhead logo, and they you know partake in something called the tomahawk chop, and they're just really you know it's it's like a real warrior esque um, mascot. And what's really funny about this is that if we turn the you know, turn the situation around and there was no um, Native American logos or mascots, you know, in the NFL, NBA, whatever. Um, If there was none of that, then the liberals would be outraged by it and say, oh my gosh, there's no, um, there's no representation for indigenous kids. And this is, you know, just proving that there's more oppression because there's still teams like the Cowboys and the Patriots and the Yankees and the Vikings and the Titans and so on right? You can really never win with the left. And that's why I suggest we just stop trying to win. Um, They just view the world with a pessimistic lens. And there's nothing that we can do to make them take that lens off. They're just going to find outrage within the smallest things because you might have tuned into the Super Bowl. And again, just watched a football game. But little did you know, there was all of these controversies, you know, going on on Twitter and everywhere else. People actually upset about what's happening. The next controversy surrounding the Super Bowl was that there was a black national anthem played. Um, the traditional national anthem was still played uh, in you know the Star Spangled Banner, and it was performed by country music star Chris Stapleton. Um, I thought he did a good job. And um, this is the, fir- thir- sorry, the third consecutive year that a rendition of the black national anthem, I think it's called Lift Every Voice and Sing, and it was performed, you know, during the pregame festivities and stuff. So it's the third year in a row that it was performed. And, um, you know, this this did get some some questions about the Black National Anthem, if, whether or not it should be a thing, um, whether or not it's appropriate. And so, of course, there was a conversation sparked online. And the only thing that surprises me about this is that there's not a transgender national anthem. I'm sure in years to come, there will be a transgender. It'll start with the, with the gay national anthem, and then we'll go to the transgender national anthem, and then we'll go to the unidentifying flying object national anthem that is also a non-binary gender studies major. 
I really don't understand the need for a black national anthem. Um, I think it's important to pay homage and respects and value your ancestry and your culture. But um, the fact is that black people actually don't all share the same culture or share the same ancestry or share the same backgrounds. Um, and neither do white people. You know, there's, you know, German Americans, there's Italian Americans, there's Norwegian Americans. I mean, all these diff white people come from different places, right? And so to suggest that black people all came from the exact same place and have the exact same culture it isn't exactly right. I'm, I'm maybe there's there is a, a real black culture and they partake in you know certain things. Um, but to suggest that all black people you know are under the same umbrella is just not accurate. I don't know. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to lump a group of black people together just because of their skin color. Um, you know, sure they they live as the same skin color, but. I live in the same skin color as other white people, but that doesn't mean we have the same heritage. And, um, you know, like in the black community, there's they, some different groups and communities and cultures. Um, they, they cook different foods and they practice different religions. So to lump everybody together just seems inappropriate. In my opinion, this is just another way to make white elitists feel good about themselves. You know, it's like, hey, look at me. I'm not racist. And it's like, well, yeah, man, like we're not nobody's racist like we're just trying to live and watch football you know and they're just like oh no no but look at me i'm not racist and it's like well well yeah man i mean neither are we but we just you know we wanted to, that's why we want to have one national anthem you know we want you know, there's nothing in the national anthem that says hey blacks latinos asian americans none of you guys can sing this okay none of you it doesn't inclu include any of you guys it's only for the whites it's like, no, I look at everybody as an American. You know, I value American life when it, over anything that, you know, resorts to skin color. I mean, that's the least of my worries is a skin color. So I feel like one national anthem is inclusive and it does bring everybody together. It does unite everybody. It doesn't break people apart because of their skin color. It doesn't break them apart because of their race, something that they can't control right? It just doesn't make sense to me. I really like this tweet from Darrell Harrison. Um, he talks about how it's a divisive message and suggests that we're a nation with two anthems and not together as one. So it looks like he has kind of a similar view as me um, to where this one anthem, you know, is unifying and it does include everybody. It's an umbrella anthem for every single race, every single ethnicity and culture, we all come together as one. You know, we all unite as American. All right, so now we have a couple of honorable mentions um, in today's show. First thing we're going to talk about is the end racism, you know, little term and quote um, at the end of the end zones. And this is kind of besides the point, but I literally think that everyone agrees that we should end racism. You know, maybe there's that one old guy, you know, out in the woods somewhere that's like, oh my God, you know, I just... I just can't get behind it. But um, I think that as a general you know, consensus in our society, when we see real racism, a lot of people stand up against it. I mean, it, it's not accepted anywhere. It'll make you lose your job or your career or it'll get, get you kicked out of school. It's not like it's accepted. Like, we're, you know, even when there's instances of police brutality, like it's not like those officers don't get fired or don't get removed from their jobs or maybe even face criminal charges, you know, like when we see true racism, I think the vast majority, and I really do know that the vast majority of the general public stands up against it. It just kind of makes me laugh that when, you know, with the NFL, again, these white elitists that put end racism in the end of the end zones, they think that, you know, because they're saying this very obvious thing, they're going to get patted on the back for it. And I also kind of just laugh because I'm imagining like that one racist that did tune into the game and he looks at the end of the end zone and he's like, dang, man, maybe I should have just been less racist this whole time. I, I didn't realize it until the NFL said, hey, man, let's just end racism. You know, and you never put it that way before. Now, I wish I was done with this video and we could just enjoy a football game without getting bombarded by woke bullshit, but I'm not. This is because some of my favorite people in the world showed up to the Super Bowl and 
I just want to shout them out, okay? We got LeBron James and Brittany Griner. And they are both a couple of oppressed black people that the system's rigged against. And yet they're, you know, LeBron's up in the, you know, uh, family VIP box office. And Brittany Griner's there with her girlfriend. And uh, the only thing I can really say to that is I hope Brittany Griner left her a hash at home. It's still incredible to me that we traded an arms dealer, one of the most um, vicious arms dealers in the world. Um, you know, somebody known as the merchant of death for a women's basketball player that cries about how bad America is and that she can beat DeMarcus Cousins in a one-on-one. This isn't to say that I don't want her home. You know, I think that we should fight to try to get all Americans home. But as we've seen, um, Marines have been left, you know, behind enemy lines and, you know, school teachers have been left in other countries stranded, but when it's somebody that's famous and gets to cry oppression, um, we're all supposed to feel bad and we're all supposed to give up terrorists in order for that person to return instead of maybe somebody that served their country or served other people um, instead of, you know, playing a sport. Now I'm going to end this video on a high note um, with some good news. Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker has actually been speaking out about his uh, pro-life views. And so let's go ahead and take a look at a quote from him. Um, quote, It is so essential to enshrine the protection of all human life and make Kansas a place where all human children are protected at every stage of life. End quote. And it honestly just feels nice and refreshing that a Super Bowl champion and somebody of his caliber um, is advocating for life. And um, it kind of lets us know that not all these athletes and celebrities are just leftist activists. Some of them are real people. You know, some of them really care about um, issues that are facing us. And so it's really nice because everybody knows by now probably that I'm a, a big pro-life guy. So when you see an athlete like this, you know, stand up for, you know, to, which, and it's really hard. It's It's really hard to stand up in an NFL locker room, I presume, being the fact that, they want to wear like Black Lives Matter shirts out on the field and stay in there for the national anthem and everything else. Um, it's probably not very easy to be outspoken about that type of stuff. And so I just want to, you know, salute Harrison Butker for having that courage. And um, I really respect you for standing up. All right, everybody, that concludes today's show. If you like this video, go ahead and drop a like and go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content. I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye.